We're going to take a look at uh, animating Tailwind UI component. And uh, this is context where you're not doing, like you don't have Angular view or you're not using Alpine.js, which they have sort of a natural fit I say they like uh, the Tailwind UI. Like if you look at the preview code for this is a drop down. All right, you see it has a nice little animation there. And it's got this concept here of uh, entering from to, and it's using transition uh, CSS animation. So. Um, and this kind of concept is built into uh, those frameworks I just mentioned. And if we look at this code, it's using, um, all right, let's look at this right like that. Um, if you, you look at the, uh, the source code here, you're going to see this kind of, uh, language transition enter enter start enter end leave and this is all using alpine js but as i understand Vue also has this idea angular does too okay so how do you transition this kind of stuff over and uh, you're not using those frameworks and uh, this is what i came up with so let's take a look at this this drop down here okay so i got a little animation on there, um, just a fade in, fade out. And how I'm going about this, so the context here, if you haven't been following the other videos in my series, we got Rails 6 here, using Stimulus, Tailwind, of course, and um, let me switch over here. And I have a ton of files open, okay. All right, so this code, I have the Alpine.js code here, and I have Alpine.js installed um, to uh, help me transition away from that to stimulus. But anyway, in this screencast, I'm just going to focus on what I did for animation. And um, let's take a look, though. Okay, this is not helpful. And um, if you did watch my other video on animation, this is going to dovetail a little bit in that I have some changes here. So what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm sort of using, I am using this and I'm not using this, uh, but this is animate.css, you know, one of the more well-known uh, libraries that handle animation. And in my previous video, I talked about installing uh, and using animate CSS in your in your Rails project, and, and we're in the Webpacker manifest file. I'm using SAS in that manifest file. You know, see we're loading up Tailwind here. Uh, Tailwind UI is loaded too, but that's in the config file. Uh, in the last video, I went over changing the animation speeds because they're so slow in animate.css. But um, this time, I'm not going to use as much animate.css. And I should mention too that I went ahead and I'm including the whole library like this uh, before I showed how to just just do uh, individual, um, like the individual animations. But I think it's really kind of stupid because when you look at the, I'm looking in <coughs> on this side of the screen now, the node modules, uh, actually, let me clear this because I know my face shows down there, doesn't it? Node modules, animate.css. Uh, this, this folder alone is only half a meg. That's not a lot. And uh, it's actually even less than that because we're just going to do the animate.css file within there. Okay, because there's source files in that directory I just did, so it's even smaller. So you don't really need to be concerned about si uh, uh, size. And uh, I also should say I'm running um, Tailwind 140 at the time of this video. So 
Um, what that means is I got purge JS, uh, purge JS, excuse me, purge CSS is um, included by default on this version 1.14 1 on Tailwind and um, let me just look at Tailwind config. Let me again clear, clear and we'll look at Tailwind config and you can see I'm purging CSS too. So my point is like, don't worry about the size. If you want to use animate.css, don't worry about its size. Uh, it's not big and uh, with purge CSS, it's, it's not going to be an issue. <coughs> so anyway, this is what I'm doing now. <coughs> so I, I made it more generic to do animate. And uh, uh, so I should say, I'm going to be using not transitions. I'm going to be using the animation API in um, CSS, okay, for for uh, trying to translate over, <coughs> excuse me, what we see in the Tailwind UI. See, in, the, in this comment code, I'm basically just going to be taking the from and the to and uh, bringing that over and using the animation API to make this happen. So, um, yeah, after saying that all about animate.css, these drop downs are what I'm going to show you has a version that I'm using with animate.css, just using fade in, fade out. And then one, I'm just using this drop in, drop out, um, but just, just hacking it straight through here. Now, I would always put the, I am going to put these files in their own um, file. Uh, this will probably be like a utility, just a utility stuff. Uh, you, like a utility uh, file, and then I'll just have, probably have like an animation file. But I just have them in the main manifest right now. And uh, what I'm doing, I just took what I just showed you, um, the from and to, and I stuck them in here. Now I'm using CSS, so I can use a plot, <coughs> excuse me, I'm using SAS. So I can uh, use this apply attribute in Tailwind to just, just make it short, you know, just make it like one line and just get in the habit of uh, using um, Tailwind's uh, utility classes. So that's what I'm doing here. And it makes it uh, a nice one-liner. Plus I'm I can just take the code that they're recommending over there and just not think and put it in here. Um, I make the class itself and just put the animation name in there that we declared up here. I do the same thing for Dropout. And um, just want to do the animation name because I want to be able to mess with the speeds. So the animation duration, um, I'm going to add to it so I can hack the speeds. Okay, so next what I did. Okay, so in the stimulus controller, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to detail the stimulus code later about the actual behavior of the dropdown. But for when it comes to the animation here. What I have is I have a utilities JS class, which I showed this function in the last screencast again. Um, so I don't want to go over it too much here, but I, I hacked it up a little bit in that um, it just takes classes as a second argument and doesn't add the animated class, which, which is what you do to start uh, animations with um, animate.css. Okay, so you just throw in your classes now here. Um, and to show that a little more closely, um, right here, I'm show showing the fade in, fade out from animate.css. Okay, you can see that it's, it's not as cool as the one from Tailwind. Um, and the next one I'm going to show you looks a little bit better, looks a little bit more like their example, but not quite. But anyway, here you just throw in, I'm just making state array, pushing these in for the different states of showing and hiding, and then you pump it into animate.css. You got to do a little cleanup work and a callback. Again, that was gone over in the last video. But um, let me, I'll show now the so um, this is going to be using the code that I showed here, the drop in, drop out animations. Okay, now this is going to be a little closer to the tailwind, 
Um, but I don't think it's totally right on. It gives a little more of that, it gives it scaling as the opacity is um, going in and out. So it gives it a little like a, like it's kind of like a, uh, you know, like folding something or other. Um, and, uh, okay, it just, so let's take a look over here. So it has a, you know, a little bit, and that's too slow. I'm gonna speed this up and you can do that from, but it has a little bit, is it a little closer to, no, there's is better. Anyway, I mean, I think animation is important, but I can't spend forever on it. Um, so then, yeah, it's okay. And it's a little slow compared to what uh, they're doing over there. And I can easily change that um, just by changing the speed here. The, mil the This is all in milliseconds. Okay, uh, one last thing. Um, so you, so you can see I might just get rid of animate.css altogether because I just don't think I'm going to be using it. But it's like not heavyweight either, so I might just keep it in. I don't anticipate doing too much animation. I did an animation on the uh, alert bell on the app. So you see so you get a little... Just because it just gives you like a little cool little... You know, and it's not annoying that it's... But it's just like a little kind of thing there. And I did that with... And, and this is important too with Tailwind um, to know because, uh, so what I just did is a hover wiggle and um, I just put the class into that bell. It's in the div class of that, that holds the SVG. Um, I'm not gonna bother looking at the code right here, but uh, it just has this class in it. It doesn't use the hover. Yeah, I, I will take a look at it here. Uh, where is it? There's the bell here. Um, let's make this full screen. Um, yeah, I just put in hover wiggle. Now, you'd think, okay, why don't you do, you know, the, the Tailwind API doing, like, hover wiggle? Well, because it didn't work, and reading the Tailwind docs, it does have some limitations on hover. Like, you can do um, some things right out of the box, like the text color, like the background, I believe in using the hover API, but you can't do everything. And if you do want to use other stuff, you do need to put it into the Tailwind config file. So um, uh, rather than do that, I just want to put it in here like this. Hover wiggle, that's good enough. And um, yeah, you just put it in like this. And that's how I got that. Now I should just use my, uh, I could use my timing. Uh, no, you know what? I think this is something you just hard code. I don't think you need to get it all configurable. I mean, you get it at the right speed and then you just leave it. I mean, this is looking like, you only have this in like one spot, uh, most likely. I did do um, another animation here, like just on, my, on Rails forms models errors. I have a, a little template and if you get an error, it just gives you a little shake. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm doing right now with uh, animation and um, using Tailwind UI, Tailwind CSS, and Stimulus. So I uh, hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.